Strasbourg, such a magnificent city. No wonder the French and the Germans kept taking it from each other. And of course, now it's been invaded by another army, the Europeans. Ah, here we are. Uh, I've been here before, you know, about 30 years ago. Here I am with Guy Mollet, who was the French prime minister around that time. <laughs> you wouldn't believe it, would you? How the youngsters groan. I don't mean me, of course. I mean the European Parliament. Oh, hello, uh, Mr. Uh, Yusuf. We've been expecting yeah, oh, you. Oh, oh, good. Hello. Thank you. And here's your pass. Oh, many tak. Same Am I right? Yes. Oh, yes. Quite right. Good, good. And here's the guide you asked for. You did ask for it. That is the guide? Yeah. Oh, I was looking forward to something a little more... Uh, <laughs> with legs. Yeah, but this is very simple. You just select the language you want and put those into your ears. Well, it wasn't really simplicity I was looking for. <laughs> but do you mean I've got to go through the whole of this building with those plugged into my ears and this Tower of Babel in my hand? Yeah, or, well, you can always join a visitor's group. There's one just starting over there. I'll take the Tower of Babel. Okay. My attack. Seltag? Yeah, ing and ting. <laughs> Buongiorno, Calimera. Guten Morgen. Guten Morgen. Good day. Bon dia. Buenos dias. Bonjour. Good morning. Welcome to the European Parliament. High technology is always so condescending. I'm your guide the duration of the tour. As we ascend the main staircase of the Parliament, we turn right and approach the hemi... I said right. Madam, if you go on like this, I shall switch to the Greek channel. You'll find me there too. I speak all the nine official languages of the community. Thank you. Now, where was I? The European Parliament is a democratically elected forum that represents a 320... Stop! Mr. Ustinov, where do you think you're going? That's the debating chamber, the main forum, and only the elected members of the Parliament, the MEPs, may enter the chamber. My dear guide, what is the point of my coming all the... coming all the way to Strasbourg if I can't even get into the Parliament? My... My parliament! Oh, I hope you're not going to be difficult. We have a planned itinerary for you, which includes the public gallery later on. But I am fitted with a video screen, and in your case, I suggest we start with some official guidance. I think I'm going to sit down during the official guidance. Just press the video play button and watch the screen. The European community has been growing for over 30 years. The six founder members, Belgium, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Germany, France, and Italy, were later joined by Denmark, Britain, Ireland, and then Greece. Spain and Portugal made it 12. Today, the European community is the largest trading group in the world. To look after its 320 million citizens, and that's more people than in the United States or Russia, the community has set up four bodies. The European Parliament meets in Strasbourg. It's here that the members elected by the people meet in session, one week each month. The draft laws they debate have been prepared in Brussels by the European Commission. The 17 commissioners are not directly elected to their posts, so proposals for legislation must be examined closely by Parliament's committees which meet nearby. Luxembourg is where most of the Parliament's staff are based. And the Court of Justice, which makes sure we all respect the community's laws. Parliament is in the centre of this subtle balance of power between European legislators and the millions of individuals who live by these laws.
Parliament has the ultimate power to dismiss the Commission or reject the community's annual budget. But day by day, it promotes and amends proposed laws before they pass to the Council of Ministers. Meetings of the Council of Ministers are where the national interests of the states are advanced. It's here that agricultural ministers get together to discuss farming and trade ministers economic issues. Two or three times a year, the prime ministers gather at summit meetings to lay down guidelines for common action. But when do the people have their say? Once every five years in the world's only international elections. It's their votes that decide the makeup of the parliamentary chamber, where the 518 MEPs sit not by nationality, but by political group. Here, men and women representing almost every shade of the political spectrum debate and vote on issues of importance to people from the Shetlands to Crete. So this is it, Parliament in session. Shh, not so loud. Well, I can cope with the uh, French and the English and so on, but my Dutch is a little rusty. <laughs> Another earphone. Oh, goodness. Have you two met? <laughs> Put them on, please. There is much to see and little time. Whoever speaks during this debate. Als woord voor gegenüber der of the porte-parole du groupe socialiste. Edme vandaag. Socialist kies op maandag. De nostro groep. Yes, it must be very complicated for the members. I mean, a Dane coming all the way from Copenhagen to Strasbourg just to argue with the with the Portuguese. <laughs> Travelling is a necessary part of the life of the members. Just listen to what they have to say. Everything I regard as being based on the Strasbourg week, and the week before that I go for a group meeting for three days. The rest of that week I do constituency work. And either all of the third week or the fourth week in the month uh, is on committee work in Brussels. My average month, if one counts it as 20 working days, would be up to 10 working days away from the constituency and 10 days in the constituency to talk to them about my work and to listen to their problems. But although the size of European constituencies is eight or nine times as large as Westminster constituencies, I think that the level of perception among constituents is not as high as for Westminster MPs. And so I get the same amount of mail uh, as each individual Westminster Member of Parliament. And representing half a million electors is a, a great difficulty in identifying yourself to the electorate. Instead of occupying one location like any other sensible parliament, we occupy uh, two in a bit. So we have our plenary sessions in, in Strasbourg. Now, of course, this is quite unsatisfactory. It's financially extremely wasteful. And when you come home at the weekend, then you find that you have a lot of constituency work to do, meetings to do, and enormous pressures from that end because that's, after all, the job of an MEP, really, to keep in touch both with what's happening in the community institutions and keeping in touch with what is happening in the constituency. Yeah, but you tell me that the Commission sets the agenda and the ministers have the last word, so what is the Parliament then? Piggy in the middle. Rather more than that. I'll have you know that this elected Parliament changes nearly two out of three draft laws before they can be put into effect. Yes, but you're talking about the power to agitate in favour of change rather than the power to change. Hmm. A fair description of any parliament, perhaps, Mr. Eustonov? But remember, much of the members' work is done outside the sessions, both in committees and back home. Come and hear how they describe it. The role of the parliament uh, is an evolving one. We have arguably a much greater influence on the final shape of legislation than many backbenchers in many national parliaments. 
I think the main football is to make absolutely sure that the finances of the European community are properly allocated and spent to the purposes for which they're allocated. There's a lot you can do with this parliament, in spite of the idea that many people have that we have no powers. The reason I chose to go on to the Committee on the Environment, Public Health and Consumer Protection and on the Women's Affairs Committee was for a very simple reason. These are areas in which the EC has had, I believe, a positive impact. Euro MPs like myself can raise matters direct with the European Commission. And so it's possible in the course of the day in Brussels to not just talk to officials of the common market, but to actually go through particular projects with them. So you have to know how to lobby. The Commission, from my experience, is the most open bureaucracy in the world. It's one of the smallest. If Europe is not going to fall even further behind Japan or the United States, it does need to make economic decisions which will make sure that we have a, a strong industrial and economic base for the future. The major conflict that there has been is over car pricing and uh, the Commission has felt the need to legislate recently to stop companies from charging excessive prices, as they thought, in Britain. And of course there is a grave danger that if we were to suddenly be forced to drop our car prices in Britain, manufacturers would turn around and say, right, we've got to cut jobs. So the member's first job is to go to market in Brussels and haggle and hassle, and then eventually bring back the bacon for his or her constituents. Some of them would say so, but they'll also remind you that there are broader issues at stake. Steak, yes. I could do with lunch. You are here to learn, Mr. Ustinov, not eat. All right. Each member has an obligation to Europe as a whole. Parliament is not there simply to attack the Commission on points of order, but to fight for what's best for all of us, often in the face of individual governments pushing their own interests. Here, let's show you. If a task of government can be carried out at local authority level, that's where it should be done. We deal with the drains and the dustbins at local level, and housing as, as well as the health service should very much be a national domain. But the oil companies that uh, produce petrol certainly do not operate at national level, they operate at transnational level. It is no good Britain attempting to legislate alone to control pollution. We are dropping pollution on other people, they are dropping it on us. Acid rain cannot really be dealt with at local level, it has to be dealt with at a very large scale. Not just one member state can solve that problem because of course we can't control the air. If you take, let's say, the drainage of Irish bogland, uh, Irish bogland by definition is bogland in Ireland. Where you run into difficulties, however, is that Irish bogland is important for migrant geese, uh, which are travelling from north to south or across the community. Now, these geese aren't Irish geese. Geese, by and large, don't carry passports. And so the geese are a, a European resource. Issues like the protection of part-time workers, the introduction of parental leave for both mothers and fathers, cuts across all boundaries. One of the great problems about AIDS for disabled people, mechanical AIDS, electronic AIDS, these things could be made much, much cheaper if we could, if we could manufacture them at European level. I'm in favour of the CIP, but I do think that it takes up too high a proportion of the European budget. A women's group in my area got money for a training scheme that was uh, particularly designed to enable women to learn about the new technologies. We've got to look outward, we've got to think of the younger generation who are coming on, and unless we do that, we will find that our country, I believe, will be at the back of the queue. Today in the United Kingdom, one in five of the training posts uh, which are provided under the Youth Training Scheme are provided for by community money. Britain has done very well out of the social fund. We took the decision in 24 hours flat after the showing of the BBC film on Ethiopia, the Budget Committee took the decision to make two major transfers of £30 million and £35 million 
BEC, of course, now disburses some 50% in Britain's case of overseas aid. And making sure that uh, decisions which are taken at a European level are properly controlled democratically. One of the great things about the community is that we can learn such a lot from each other and in the past, we just haven't bothered to look. Uh, just, we haven't bothered ju to see just what Just a minute, could. are you there? Yes. Yeah. I feel a uh, conflict of interest setting in. In what sense? I can't go on like this on an empty stomach. To put it in terms you'd understand, I need to change my bathrooms. Very well. Uh. There's a canteen downstairs. Where? On the one hand, the members of Parliament have to represent their own particular regions, uh, searching for any uh, community grants which may be going. Yes. <laughs> On the other hand, they have a duty towards the whole of Europe, an obligation to make the company... Ah, merci. To make the community a better place. True. On ne peut pas rassembler à froid un pays qui compte 265 spécialités de fromage. Now, can your micro-circuits translate that? <laughs> it's no joke trying to run a country that has 265 different kinds of cheese, as Charles de Gaulle said. But now, we have Europe, we have Wensleydale, we have double this, triple that from England, we have Edam from Holland, to say nothing of uh, Gorgonzola, and <laughs> Danish blue. Mm. Hola, ¿qué tal? Huh? Oh. Well, what you must realize sooner or later, now that we're alone, is that this is a continent of enormous, concentrated variety. And even when we're all Euro citizens, which I hope we will be one day, we will still maintain our differences in some respects. But of course, it's absolutely useless to discuss either cheese or culture with you. Ah! After all... Sorry, what can a gadget know about taste, oral or intellectual? Oh, Mr. Eustonov, you are the rudest, unkindest visitor I've ever had to escort. If you can bear to listen to a gadget, kindly eat your metaphors while I explain. The Parliament is not forcing the member states together. On the contrary, it's the people of Europe who've realized in a thousand different ways how their everyday lives are changing. As the world shrinks, such changes are bound to happen. Our economies are becoming more and more closely linked, and people move around Europe both on holiday and to find work. Problems cross national frontiers too, and we have to try to solve them together. And frontiers are themselves problems. And how can countries like Britain keep up in technology and research unless their scientists can work with their community colleagues? Britain's links with the rest of the world are being channeled more and more through its membership of the community. Our lives have taken on a European dimension and we Europeans have the unique right to elect our own parliament. Ah, so it's here that democracy finds its voice. After all, Members of the European Parliament are accountable to the public through television, radio, the press. And it's in this building that we, you, I, and the others, have our say about the present and the future of our Europe. Well, you've got the message, and you won't have to listen to this gadget anymore. Tuck, tuck, tuck. Goodbye, Mrs. Was oh, wonderful. Mr. Houston of the Electronic Guide. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Eustonhoff, where are you taking me? Drive on, Ruggiero. <laughs> Keep your eye on the road, Ruggiero, never mind.